Uh, as far as introductions go, I'm Anant Naishadam, co-founder and chief strategy officer uh, of Good Business Lab. And on behalf of uh, everyone at GBL, I'd like to thank you for uh, participating in our new thought leadership platform, GBL Access, um, where we're on a mission to provide our growing community um, with research insights from the field and beyond uh, in conversations with practitioners just like Charlie here uh, to try good business action. So Charlie, it's great to have you on. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself, uh, your background and uh, kind of the position you hold uh, with the ILO, and a little bit about the work you've been doing. Good. Uh, my name is Charlie Bodwell. I am the ILO's enterprise specialist for East Asia, Southeast Asia and the Pacific. I handle around 25 countries, the regional advisor on things like uh, enterprise development issues regarding entrepreneurship, small business development, government policy on small business development, uh, all the way up through soft skills training that we're doing with multinationals. Uh, we're also doing a lot of work now with factories and how to upgrade those factories in a responsible manner. Great, great. And, and that spans, you know, you said 25 countries, kind of all regions. What, what, what kind of regions of the world are you focused on? I'm focused from Mongolia South all the way through Myanmar, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, uh, out into the Pacific. So great big countries, small ones, highly industrialized, less industrialized. Uh, yeah, and, 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 you know, of course, we've talked a lot about your work in garments, but, uh, but there's quite a few sectors uh, represented there, uh, right? Yeah, a lot of different sectors. And, you know, the way that the, the UN works, we work based on projects that we get opportunities for, largely. Uh, part of my work is, is under the regular budget, of providing assistance to governments and, and social partners. Uh, part of it is, is making sure that we get these kind of technical cooperation projects. And those, those can be somewhat driven towards specific sectors. We've worked in tourism. We've worked in, in uh, automotive parts in India. And Faridabad, I spent a lot of time uh, working there. And now we happen to have a, a big project working with the garment sector. Yeah, and, and there's been quite a bit of work kind of specifically, uh, maybe everyone's work has become so focused on COVID these days, but there's been a lot of important work uh, from your side. I know, um, you know, ILO has done a lot of stuff on the kind of COVID-19 garment factories business resilience guides. How did those come about and, and kind of how have they been received in the industry? Well, they came about just by brainstorming in our team, uh, trying to decide how do we help factories? They need immediate assistance. They, need, uh, they don't need a training program to be built up. When you're, when you're dealing with disaster response, there is a period, different needs at different points. And at the point what we're in over the last six months or a year was really survival and helping those factories try to figure out what do we do? How do we make it through this, this kind of period of, of dramatically reduced orders or whatever it happened to be that they were dealing with. Uh, trying to figure out how do you do that? How do you do that quickly? And how do you make it accessible? The guys seem the easiest way. We could, we could draft up some things. We have people that, that know factories really well, know what their, their, their struggles are. And you know, it boils, around, boils down to around some really key points like cash management or trying to figure out if you're losing a customer, how to find a new customer. So that's what we, we looked at and, and tried to put together something that factories could use quickly and easily. How much were they taken up? You know, that, that's the tough thing on the internet. You, you put it up there on the internet, you go onto the message boards, you go onto the blogs, you put out, here we've got these guides, and hundreds or thousands of people download them. How many use them? We don't really know. I wish they, they contact us and say, these were great, can we have more? But it doesn't really work that way. You know, people take them, they look at them, they use them, they don't. And we, it's really hard for us to know. Uh, we have feedback that we've had from associations and others has been really positive. You know, these are really useful. We've, we've held a couple of workshops where we introduced them in, in Bangladesh and Cambodia. And the factories really appreciated it. I wish there was a way to make sure that every factory out there gets their hands on and uh, at least has a chance to look at some of these key areas of, of action for them. 
so that they can they can be strong. Um, yeah, that's a that's a yeah. kind of a balancing act that you and I have have talked about in previous conversations too. You know, there's kind of you always want to be open access, you want to share and proliferate things as far and wide as they can be, but but the downside of this kind of purely open access thing is that you don't know who's wanting or demanding it or participating and you can't be as hands-on. So there's kind of this, you know, but if you tried to go full hands-on approach, it might take a lot longer to proliferate and, and you might get really good impact, you know, in, in a handful of places, but you may not be able to proliferate as quickly. So it's kind of a balancing act of tough. Um, in the garment- Unless we were hiring a GBL. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's certainly, well, we're kind of together trying to figure out the the, the right balance of those things. But- um, we would. We would appreciate the help to understand what impact some of our training has. You yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. But beyond that, we really need a rigorous way to capture impacts on each of our initiatives. And it's, it is really hard. I mean, our, our, our base philosophy with the program that I'm responsible for is make it all available. And yeah. Everybody in the UN and certainly in the development world take that approach. They, they sometimes keep the materials close. They, they, they want to have control of it. They want to have control over who can use it. We take something very different. We say, here it all is. We put it up online. You can download it. It's in Word. Take it. Make it better. Give it back to us when you do. Uh, yeah. But open source. That is tough, though, because then you don't have control of that, that assessment process and, and really measurement of what's happening. And then that kind of feedback loop is is broken a little bit. So, you know, if you want to then tell key actors in the space, well, look, we've proven results that it works. You might, you're a little bit hamstrung when it comes to that because you don't have uh, as much information about how much it works. Um, but, you know, you also then, even in your own in your own teams, you know, if it says, okay, well, should we take that same model the next time, God forbid we have a, another pandemic or the next time we have a, a global shock to an industry, should we take the same approach? Should we tweak it? Those are the types of questions that you know can be informed by some kind of more hands-on or more detailed uh, evaluation. Um, so there's kind of pros and cons to both in some sense. Well, with the with the learning hub that we've you know, we've got learninghub.ilo.org where we put all our materials to actually download stuff, you have to register. Okay. And we get to see what you download. So that does give us some view into people who are taking it. Who's interested in what? Uh, who's interested in which modules seem to, to have the greatest interest? Uh, what the bounce rate is, all those kind of statistics you get with a website. And, and we are able to reach out to those people afterwards. So as we add on to that, you know, it's relatively recent development, but as we add new aspects to that website, new tools go up online, we can reach out to those people and say, hey, here's, here's something else. And also, can you let us know what you did? So we will have some ability to go back. Uh, tracer, st tracer surveys are one of the biggest ways of when you're doing SME development to go back and check with the people a year later, two years later, what was the impact? Did this training change your life? And, and we do hundreds of those. Uh, we'll probably do the same with the, with the website as it goes on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, th I know that one thing both of us talked about um, you know, as it relates to the garment industry is also trying to leverage that kind of supply chain network to some degree. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of these factories might be SMEs or, you know, marginally larger than that. Um, and there's a whole lot of them, but, you know, if you can understand some pivotal nodes, the buyers or some middlemen and so on who, um, who, who uh, link them together, then they might be interesting levers to pull. I guess 